As of yesterday evening, Colonial has begun restarting the flow of refined products in their pipeline. This morning, Colonial reported that fuel is beginning to flow to a majority of the markets that they service, and they should be reaching full operational capacity as we speak, as I speak to you right now. That is good news. But I want to be clear, we'll not feel the effects uh, at the pump immediately. This is not like flicking on a light switch. This pipeline is 5,500 miles long. It had never been fully shut down its entire history. And so, uh, so fully, and we have to, now they have to safely and fully return to normal operations. Uh, and it's going to take some time. And there may be some hip, hic, hiccups like I just had along the way here. <laughs> Still, we expect to see a region by region return to normalcy beginning this weekend and continuing in the next week. In the meantime, I want to update you on what our administration is doing to accelerate this process, to mitigate shortages, and to protect you from price gouging protect the American people from price gouging, all those along the line. First, we relaxed rules for pipeline operators to provide flexibility for emergency personnel to help manually get portions of the pipeline up and running earlier this week. Secondly, over the weekend, we reviewed and worked with the company to get a portion of the pipeline system from North Carolina to Maryland to operate under manual control and delivers, deliver its existing inventory. In addition, we put in place emergency orders that lifts hours, the hours restrictions and allowed states to lift weight restrictions for tank truck drivers to be on the road. This allows those drivers to work more and carry more fuel to the affected regions. Third, the Environmental Protection Agency issued a targeted 20-day waiver of standards in several states to give fuel suppliers more flexibility to use available fuels where they're needed, which will boost the fuel supply. And those, uh, those last two actions have made tens of millions of gallons of additional fuel available each day to be able to be distributed. Put another way, the extraordinary measures the administration has taken, we estimate, sent enough gas to stations to fill the tanks of over 5 million vehicles in the last few days. Fourthly, as part of an effort to use every possible means to accelerate fuel deliveries, last night I granted a waiver of the Jones Act to uh, fuel suppliers. This allows non-U.S. flagged vessels to transport refined fuel products from the Gulf of Mexico to affected areas and we'll grant additional waivers if necessary. These steps are temporary, but they will remain in place until full service is fully restored. Don't panic, number one. I know seeing lines at the pumps or gas stations with no gas can be extremely stressful, but this is a temporary situation. Do not get more gas than you need in the next few days. As I said, we expect the situation to begin to improve by the weekend and into early next week, and gasoline supply is coming back online, and panic buying will only slow the process. And I also want to say something to the gas stations. Do not, I repeat, do not try to take advantage of consumers during this time. I'm going to work with governors in the affected states to put a stop to price gouging wherever it arises.